Hello and welcome to a first impressions of Exodus Borealis. If you'd like to check out the game, there is a link in the description and I'm not being paid for this, but I did receive a game key from the developer. And as far as I'm aware, it is a very small dev team. It might even only be one person, but I'm not entirely sure on that. But it is a very, very small developer team. And at the moment, there is a demo available. So if you want to check it out through the link in the description, then you're also going to be able to download a demo and you can try that out. It is currently in early access, not very expensive at all. It's about $15, I think. So pretty good. And this is definitely one of those games that I absolutely love because this is a city builder and now, okay, just hang on, hang on, because you know me, if you've seen any of my other city builder videos, then you'll know that I'm not that good at them, even though I do absolutely love them. Um, but the other, the other thing that it is, is indeed a tower defense. Yeah, tower defense is where I absolutely love. Uh, there, there, I, I feel like there, there isn't enough tower defense. I don't know, is it just me? Nah, maybe it's just me. Anyway, as you can see here, we have the difficulty settings and where we are going to be attempting to play on. So for example we have Shiroi Island here, the first discovered island found after fleeing the homeland across the Great Northern Sea. The island's open grasslands allow for plenty of freedom in how to lay out the new settlement. On the far side of the island lies an invader gate nestled amongst white cliffs. Right, okay so here's the thing. Basically you are playing as a bunch of shipwrecked villagers and civilians and so on and you're going to need to try and survive while well, building your city up, of course, against the demon hordes. Yeah, against the demon hordes. So, yeah, that's going to be very interesting. And as you can see, it says here, the as intended difficulty is meant to be challenging and will likely require multiple attempts before you will succeed on making it off the island. If you're looking for a more casual learning experience, easy maybe, a good difficulty to start with. Hmm, I like that. Thank you very much for that. I'm going to play as on intended. And then we're going to see. We're going to see how it goes. Because here's the thing. I am a big fan of tower defense, as I've just said. And generally, I do really like city builders. I'm just awful at them. So we'll see what we can do. I have no idea about any of this, but I can only hope that it's going to give me a tutorial. There it is. <laughs> okay. Phew. I was a bit worried about that for a second. Land at last. This small green island is a sanctuary, a chance to rebuild. Unfortunately, it appears only a single chip survived the journey. It is important to start building the new colony in a good location. Take the time to survey the island and get an understanding of the lay of the land before construction begins. And they give you a really nice overview of what you can do with the controls. And I, I actually really like this way of doing things personally because I, I, I have nothing against tutorials that require you to input these kinds of directions like for example using WSD and Q&E I have no problem with you know a game requiring you to do these things before it goes on to the next stage of the tutorial but it is just a little bit iterative you know there's really not really any need to do that if they just show me something like this and then I know exactly what I have to do and how I can do it you can just move around like this you can move around with this and then you can you know twist it and everything and I it's relatively easy to learn that. No, I think it's relatively easy to learn that. Anyway, let's have a look around and see exactly what's going on here. All right, so this is a pretty nice area to start in as far as I can tell. And there is indeed a gateway. So this is obviously where the demons are going to be coming uh, coming from. And I, I look at that. I just completed the tutorial. Fantastic. The crashed ship has limited supplies in the wreckage. Only a small amount of food and wood can be recovered. Most buildings will require stone for construction. Building a mine should take priority in order to start producing stone. This structure allows miners to dig for stone and so on. Okay, wait a minute. I should probably read a little bit more of this. I was just about to close it, but then I thought to myself, wait a minute. To avoid long-distance delivery of stone, the mine should be placed near where the settlement is planned. Ideally, the settlement would not be too far from the gate, not too far from the boat and its initial supplies. If unsure where to place, the middle of the island is a decent place to start. Okay, yeah, well, that's what I was planning on doing anyway, kind of. So I guess we'll do that. Okay, so let's do civilian buildings. So let's do a mine. And as you can see, there's the mine right here. And placing location... Okay, low low construction. Okay, normal construction. Okay, I, I understand. I understand. Okay, so let's go for something like this. There we go. 
something like that should be good. I actually really like the controls already. Having right click be the cancel button and left click be the placing button. I, I feel like, I don't know, I've played a bunch of games in the last year or so that have made the placement of buildings relatively tricky. And I don't know why they do that. But anyway, put citizens to work. Now it's time to give specific jobs to citizens. Builders, these are the workers who focus on getting buildings built and miners. Only a single miner can work a mine at a time. That's actually really nice as well. Uh, I like that. That really helps uh, helps us out quite a bit. And as you can see, we can uh, see a bunch of things about our people as well. And I guess what we're going to do is we're just going to see who's good and who's not good. Uh, as time goes on, as you can see right here, these are what we have. And of course, our citizens are going to be able to grow and have children and um, marry and so on and so forth and that is going to be very interesting indeed anyway let's go to the research tree as well as you can see there's a bunch of research to be done here too uh, i have no idea what we really want to go for probably defensive structures right probably defensive structures but i'm not going to start anything just yet because no doubt the game is going to tell me something like that in the near future let's just have this go on double speed for the moment so that we can get this mine built what is this Elemental guide. Look at that. Wind gems, sun gems, life, ice, water, lightning, and fire, as well as terror, of course. That's uh, that's that's no doubt going to have something to do with our defensive buildings potentially. Okay, so let's have um, let's see who do we want to actually go on this? This this person not being worked. How do I um how do I do that actually? Ah, job management. There we go. Oh, that is so easy, isn't it? Ah, oh, literally, I'm such an imbecile. Okay, so there we go. Let's put one person on that. And that's it. And there you go. So there you go. That's that's it. Done. Okay, that was easy enough, wasn't it? Okay, so now we should probably get civilian buildings. So we should probably get a house and some other stuff, right? I think so, right? Yeah. I mean, why not? So let's build one round about here. And do we need anything else? What else do we need? Uh, structure for the safe storage of materials. So we should probably put that around about here, I guess. Doesn't really matter in my opinion, so we'll just do that. And then we're going to go get and get a farm as well, of course. But we need some wood. How are we doing on wood at the moment? Oh, actually not bad, as you can quite clearly tell. A tree nursery, an open area used for growing trees to chop, uh, chop down even. Okay, that's pretty good. So let's make that eh, not too far away from the storage area. So let's do that round about here. Okay, so what? Uh, yeah, some citizens are without a home, running out of storage room, and assign jobs. Assign one builder and one miner. Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. Wait, 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 wait. Yes, one builder. We need one of those as well. There we go. Okay, so that's what we needed to do. Did not realize that, but that's nice. Okay, there we go. Now that's done. Now it is time to build some homes for the colonists. Citizens will claim homes after they are built. A home can hold up to four single citizens or can hold a couple and any of their non-adult children. Use the civilian buildings menu and place two houses. Okay. No problem. No problem at all. Okay. I actually like the menus quite a bit already. I think the menus are really nicely done. They're not going to clutter the screen too much and they're very easy to find because I find that in these city builder games generally some of the time they are very convoluted and you're looking through all these menus and you're thinking to yourself where am I going to find this very specific little building that I need to make and it takes an age to find it in this game not so much which I very much appreciate and obviously we have the ability to change the time and how fast octuple speed are you serious okay that's crazy i've never seen that before all i've seen is is literally one times two times and five times speed maybe ten times speed but that's very rare octuple speed wow that's that's going to be pretty fun i'm going to go for quadruple speed right now just to get the house done and we're going to have everything else be built relatively soon as well so that's not too bad we got the storage barn right there and we just want to place two houses and some citizens are without a home we should be okay once we get the second house up and running it is raining unfortunately so everyone is getting wet uh, the next morning the summer of year zero 
There we go. Wood from trees is one of the primary resources for the colony. Mature trees naturally seed new trees over time. If the island's trees are harvested faster than they are renewed, this can lead to a runaway effect. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Leaving the colony no wood for heat, construction, or production. As trees take years to grow, a long, slow recovery from the situation can have devastating effects. Okay, so it's a good idea to start building a tree nursery each season until it is apparent that the harvested level of trees is in balance with new trees maturing. The number, lo number of mature trees for each day can be viewed in the statistics screen once it is unlocked after the first year has been completed. Right. Okay, we don't currently have that obviously unlocked just yet, but that's going to be very, very interesting indeed. Okay, I'm going to need to keep an eye on that, and I've just forgotten what that tutorial just told me because I am just that smart. So, yes, hopefully <laughs> hopefully we're not going to have too many difficulties. Okay, wait a minute. We should probably get a lumberjack, right? Not two, just one. Thank you. There we go. Okay, so how many, uh, how much chopped trees uh, we have? Uh, we've got 235 wood. That's that's fine. Most of the buildings are not that expensive at the moment. But I am going to continue. Uh, I'm going to just have uh, a lumberjack do do their thing right now. Okay, the limited food stores will run out soon. Okay, yeah, so we need to get a farm. And there are various tips here as well. Generally, the more seasons a crop takes to mature, the more output it will have. An individual farmer can generally work three fields per day. This can vary based on their attributes and will be reduced if they need to harvest and plant a field in the same season. For example, itchy root in the summer. Mm -hmm. Okay, so use these, uh, place two farms. Okay. Okay, let's place two farms. Uh, I'm going to place them relatively close by to the storage building. This is the storage building right here, so I'd like them to be quite close just to make them more useful, if you know what I mean. I've got to be very careful about the gateway as well. I mean, obviously, they're being very gentle with me right now, and they're making it, you know, very um, uh, easy to understand and everything, and I, I very much appreciate that, <laughs> especially for me, yeah. All right, research lab, yeah, well, that's that's pretty obvious. Okay, so let's get uh, the research lab built. Uh, I don't really care where that is, but I'm going to just build it round about there. And we can now build some defensive structures, or we can start researching the defensive structures and the job management. We need one person as a researcher. There we have it. Okay. That is looking pretty good so far. And bear in mind that uh, you can actually change what the mine is going to produce. So you can see here that you can actually produce ore, or you can produce stone, dependent on if you have an overabundance of a particular kind of resource. You can change your mines uh, well, change your mind as well as your minds. <laughs> yes, exactly. To produce whatever you want. And it's the same thing with deciduous trees or coniferous trees as well. So coniferous trees take approximately two years and three seasons to grow to maturity and yield roughly 50 wood. Deciduous take two years to grow and yield roughly 30 wood. So they take a little bit longer. Three seasons. Yeah, so that's like, what? 2.75 years or so. Yeah, that would be pretty harsh. Anyway, these guys are obviously going to be building this and the researcher, well, we're hopefully going to be seeing whether our research is being done. Apparently it is. And two single citizens have paired up to make a family. When this happens, they will claim a house for themselves, making room for potential future children. If there is not a house free, this may break up a house of singles, resulting in homelessness. It's often a good idea to have a spare house available. If this happens in winter, the resulting homeless citizens can easily end up freezing to death. Well, there's the city builder aspect of things. So we should probably get another house. Let's build that. Here. I really like this grid as well, by the way. Have you noticed that? It's for making it so that everything is very uniform and you don't have to have this huge grid all over the workspace, all over the ground. It really does make a big difference. Anyway, anyone not assigned to a specific job will default to be a general worker. And general workers are just the guys that just carry stuff and do you know random jobs here and there. Ensuring houses are properly stocked with wood for fires prevents citizens from freezing to death in the winter. If production buildings are stocked and cleared, the building's worker can focus on production instead of stopping periodically to gather the required resources and clearing output. This can make the general worker one of the most important jobs of a smooth-running colony. When a profession doesn't have a task to be done, 
Workers assigned will fall back to taking on general worker jobs. For instance, a farmer who has harvested all crops in the fall will then act as if they are a general worker. That's super nice. You know, this is the funny thing. I was actually reading reviews of this game um, before I started playing it. And I thought to myself, wow, this is actually actually really insane. Because this is early access. Got to just remind you here, because I did say at the beginning that it was early access. But just think about it. How crazy is it that this is so polished? I mean, it's running really, really well as well. I don't know whether you can tell, but there there haven't been any frame rate drops at all. And it's just so well implemented. Everything seems so well implemented. Anyway, uh, okay, so the gate marking seemed to warn of a threat on the island. It informs of a group that first ambushes new inhabitants a year after they arrive. Defenses should be prepared. So walls, a cheap structure, preventing anyone from passing, and towers. Okay, so obviously if you are an aficionado of tower defense games, then you'll know that some of them allow you to build your own mazes. And this very much makes a huge difference to how effective you're going to be defending against wh whichever invaders attempt to attack you. Use the defense building screen and place a small arrow tower near the gate. Wait for the tower to be constructed. Okay, apparently we're not even bothering with uh, with walls at the moment. Okay, that's good to know. Small arrow tower. Let's place that, I guess, here? Or here? I have no idea where to place it, to be honest. Let's place it around about there, I guess. Ah, okay, so as you can see, this is the line of enemies. This is where the line of enemies is going to come to. And technically what I could do is I think I have enough. Yeah, I think I have enough actually. So what I could do is I could do this. So if I do something like, wait a minute, I need to do this a little bit better. So if I do something like so, actually, no, I don't want to do that. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Let's do something like this. And as you can see, you can actually make it so that your maze, so to speak, is really, really nicely done. So you can make it like so. See, that's the kind of thing I'm talking about. So then what you can do is you can make another small arrow tower and you can put it round about... Uh, you could probably put it round about here. And you could probably put another one round about here if you wanted to, or maybe here. You could basically put it anywhere you want. So I'm going to put mine here. There we go. Okay, so we've got three arrow towers and we've got a pretty decent defense right here. Obviously, we need to make sure that my people are going to get their their stuff done. And I actually would like to research something else, but I have no idea what else they really want me to go for. What about multi-season crops? I'm not entirely sure. Um, actually, you know what? I'm going to pause real quick because I'd like to read some of this. Simple teaching techniques parents can use to help educate their children as the child follows them around during the day. This results in a chance to boost a child's education, resulting in improved work efficiency for their whole life. That's actually kind of insane, and that is indeed a passive benefit, so I'm actually very much appreciative of that. So we're probably going to do something along those lines. Everyone is perfectly fine, and we should probably build another house. Uh, at least I think we should probably build another house. Okay, let's build it round about here. There we go. All right, and let's go to double speed. And how? Uh, okay, so there's the adult population and there's the child population. What do we need to do? Place a small arrow tower near the gateway for the tower to be constructed. Okay, well, I really don't care about that right now. Basically, as long as they get some of these walls up and everything, and we don't run out of resources too fast, we should be absolutely fine. Bear in mind that the storage, as you can see right here, does have a capacity too. Oh, it seems like we only have a capacity for three houses. Okay, I didn't know that. Okay. We might need to improve that through research or something like that, as you can see, maybe. Mm. City planning would probably be very good. Yeah, I can only queue one up at the moment, though, so... Wait a minute. I absolutely... Okay, I did this completely wrong, by the way. Okay, I think you can kind of tell why I did this wrong. So... <laughs> Oh, I did this in another another video a long time ago. I did this in uh, in a video that I made like a year ago, I think. And I didn't realize that you could rotate buildings. I know how to rotate buildings in this game, 
but I decided that I would probably not do that. Yeah, I'm very smart, as you can quite clearly tell. Oh dear, okay, well, I think it should be fine because they actually said that it was gonna be okay. Oh, wait a minute. I can actually destroy this, recovering half of the resources. Technically, I could do that, but I think it's gonna work nevertheless. So I don't think I really need to worry too much. There's the, There we go, there's the research, that's been completed. Let's do the city planning now. And I'm going to go to Octuple Speed. Yes, Octuple Speed. Let's do that. Okay, winter of year zero. We should be uh, almost done, hopefully. I'm going to put this as a high priority because we really need to get that done as soon as we possibly can. And I'm going to make this a high priority as well. We're going to make both of these arrow towers uh, be kind of um, kind of fast. We need to get that get them done relatively quickly. Okay, more research. Uh, should we do charcoal? Or should we do schooling? Schools can initially... Oh, unlocks the school building. Oh, a mortar for more advanced buildings. Mortar is used for the construction of an upgrade of several advanced buildings and towers. The production of mortar requires stone, which can be mined, and charcoal, which will need to be produced. The intermediate resource of charcoal will need to be first researched and then produced in a charcoal hut. After mortar has been researched and both intermediate resources have been gathered, mortar can be produced in a mortar mill. At this point, it is becoming important to multitask, and the defenses should not be neglected in the pursuit of mortar. Right. Okay, so let's go for charcoal then. Good timing. And let's slow things down a little bit. And there's my arrow tower, so that's that's obviously done. Bear in mind that I don't believe citizens can actually even walk through here, so I would assume that the enemies can also not walk through these um these gaps in the walls so i think we should be okay cross fingers right we should be all right i think so uh, we'll see we'll see what happens anyway let's build uh actually yeah we, we're researching uh, charcoal right now aren't we yeah yeah we're researching that right now okay so that's absolutely fine do we need anyone to actually man these towers no it doesn't seem like it we should be fine then all right, not too bad, not too bad. Okay, I'm actually wondering whether I should just destroy these things, but they do only say to build one arrow tower, so I can always fix the walls later on down the line. So I shouldn't have too many difficulties with that. Let's go to quadruple speed right now. There we go. They're finally adding more to this. The fire mode is attacking the same target as long as it is still alive and in range. That's absolutely fine. Okay, there's the research for the charcoal. And now I can finally build a charcoal hut. And that is going to be built probably about here. Because that is right next to the mine, of course. I mean, I don't know how much that really makes a difference. But generally, I think it's a good idea to do that. And then we can also get a uh, mortar little bit of research going. There we go. Okay. I'm liking this a great deal. You know why? I don't need food. Oh, I do actually need food. Look at that. Oh, we have un... Oh, no, I do need food. Oh no, I had no idea. Oh dear. Okay, it's actually winter right now, so this is problematic, to say the least. Uh, I probably should have built more farms. Yes, I, I think we should be okay, though. I think we should be fine, right? Cross fingers? Yes? I think we should be okay. At least I hope so. Alright, let's go to quadruple speed once again. I have no idea how long it's actually going to take for us to get into the next um, the next season. But I suppose we'll find out relatively soon or it, yeah there we go there we go or it's just gonna kill me immediately okay fantastic okay oh here we go grown up and is entering the workforce child uh two uh, two children have been born that's fantastic and i like how they actually share each other's names as you can see right there they share the uh the two parts of their names in the uh, uh in, the, in in terms of the the surname that is that's really cool in my opinion Okay, so start producing mortar. We still haven't done the research yet. There's also smelting. Faster citizen movement. Citizens will prioritize paths. We're trying to figure out the fastest way to get to a location. Okay, that's interesting. Oh, an elemental jar a gem has been mined. Oh, okay. Uh, what, what is this? Used to apply elemental damage to advanced towers and elemental boosts to boost towers. Okay. These elemental damage, uh, this elemental damage boosts, uh, uh, apply unique effects. Okay, and there's obviously an elemental guide if you want to look at this right here. So basically, okay, <laughs> this is very complex. Very complex, but very cool. This is basically what is good against the next thing. So for example, 
Only one element can be double synergized at a time, so consideration should be given to what sets of elements will be used in sections of the defense. For example, with a life plus ice plus water, only the ice will get the double synergized effect, which will result in slowing enemies even quicker, while life and water will get only the single synergy boost. As you can see right here, life, ice, water. Now, obviously, if you take a look at the red lines, the red dotted lines here, you can tell which effects do not work well with each other. So you can see here, when the element is impacting an invader, if the invader is already impacted by an opposing element, the opposing effects are nullified, removing any ongoing impact they may have. So in other words, if you want to make a maze with a kill zone or a kill box area, you want to make sure that each of your effects are not cancelling each other out. So you need to make sure that you're not having ice with fire, for example, and so on. So that's very, very intriguing to me. And that does add an additional layer of strategy, which I got to say I, I very much like. Okay, yeah, so I, I did get an ice gem. Does that actually do anything for me? I don't think so. Yeah doesn't seem to do anything for me right now so let's go to quadruple speed once again and there we go there's another arrow tower being built fantastic then we should be able to get the rest built relatively fast oh and speaking of that i should get another house <gasps> a deep roar beyond the gate signals that an assault is planned this coming nightfall okay well let's build another house there we go and what else do we need Okay, yeah, deep roar, start producing mortar. Yes, absolutely fine. Okay, yeah, so then we can get a mortar mill and we'll build that round about here. And there's the charcoal and we're still good in terms of our storage. And what's this? No active research, of course. Okay, so let's get uh, uh, schooling. Yeah, schooling, let's get schooling. I have no idea what else. I think education is relatively important. <laughs> Uh, I mean, very. <laughs> Let's just say that. Okay, so now, my walls, my fantastically architecturally beautiful walls that uh, are not having any gaps in them whatsoever are going to be put to the test. So we'll see how that goes. It is now four o'clock. Oh, here we go, here we go. We've got an enemy. There he is. What is he? It's a spider. It's a hell spider. Okay, let's see what he's, uh, let's see what he's got. Oh, he's got nothing. He's dead. Well, <laughs> that was a... G <laughs> See, now this is what I was Im intending to do. This kind of thing right here, that is what I was attempting to do. But obviously I did not rotate any of the things. But at least I, I actually figured that out this time and indeed realized it. Anyway, the invading forces seem focused on destroying their predestined targets and will ignore anything on the way. As the number of invaders climb, only by directing the invaders in winding routes around towers will enough damage be done to kill them before they reach their targets. In order to prevent disrupting this tunnel vision focus, walls and towers will not be allowed to be placed in a way that creates a full blockade. Yes, of course. No problem at all there. Okay, so now I'm actually going to be destroying these things so that I can actually do it properly and not be an absolute imbecile. There we go. Okay, so let me just see what else I can do here then. So defense buildings, let's build a standard wall. Let's, uh, oh, I can actually replace it. Yeah, that seems nice. So let's do something like this. Can I, can I replace? Hold to replace? No? It doesn't seem like I can do that right now. So I'm going to have to wait for them to be destroyed. Let's go to quadruple speed so that they can do that relatively fast. They're obviously going to get the tower done first, I assume. But hopefully we're not going to get any additional attackers. Although bear in mind that I think because we have two arrow towers up and running, we really don't have to worry too much about actually, um, you know, not defeating any of the enemies so far. I think we should be absolutely fine with that. Let's go to octuple speed for the moment. I should probably get some more forestry areas. What's that? Charcoal. We have no charcoal remaining. Why not? Do I need to put someone on that? Yes, I do. I am an absolute idiot. Yes, okay. There we are. Uh, <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. Okay, well, we're going to need some more farms as well, I believe. So let's uh, let's make another one of those. Why not? 
And we need to make a uh, another tree nursery, in my opinion. So let's do another one of those too. And farmers generally can do three farms, as far as I'm aware. So that's quite nice. Gate. Research construction of a straight wall that has narrow openings, allowing citizens to slip through while still preventing any invaders from getting by. Okay, so we have another invasion coming in as well. Uh, larger classes don't really need that right now. I'm going to go for paths. I think paths are going to be very important so our citizens can run much faster over to where we need them to be. And let's get a wall. Let's build that round about there. And we need to build this here and here. And these things are not being destroyed just yet. I'm kind of worried. Uh, can we prioritize this? Yes, high priority, please. No more tutorial task. Ah, there we go. The last tutorial task has been completed. Tutorial tips will continue to be presented to offer some guidance. At this point, it's best to work towards growing the colony, improving its efficiency, and continuing to fortify the defenses. Working towards producing resources needed for more advanced towers is a good next goal. The ultimate objective for the island is to build the Victory Statue, which will require gathering an infernal power from the island's guardian demon. Oh, that, that, seems, that seems very easy. Not? Okay, yes. Building the statue breaks the curse, uh, causing any ships nearby to crash into the island, allowing further travel to further islands. Good to know. All right. So this is all going to be destroyed now. So hopefully I'll be able to then pause and then we can build some walls. There we go. And now I'm going to put these on high priority as well. And the, this needs to be high priority too. And let's do it. You know, I gotta say, this is, I've gotta say, actually, you know what? I think this is probably one of the most enjoyable city builders, with even without the tower defense element that I've played. And also, this is one of the most enjoyable tower defense games that I've played. And for the developer to be able to combine the two genres so successfully and so seamlessly, really really has a huge impact on the enjoyment level of the player. At least I'm enjoying it a great deal. So it's obviously up to you whether you think it's enjoyable or not. Ah, there's a demon. Haha, -ha, you suck. You died super easily, sir. Okay, well, whatever the case. Let's see. A large arrow tower. Maybe I should do that. Maybe I should do some smelting. Or maybe I should do multi-season crops. Yeah, let's do multi-season crops and clothing. Producing warm clothing and the construction of structures unlocks the textile, mill building, and fiber leaf crops at farms. Okay. Well, we shouldn't be too bad with three small arrow towers, right? I think we should be absolutely fine, but this is where we're going to have to continue multitasking, making sure we have enough of every single resource. And bear in mind, look at how much space we have. We have a huge amount of space, and in the end, we're probably going to be covering the entirety of this area which in my opinion is, is extremely fun and very cool to do especially considering we're going to eventually have these amazingly large towers like for example uh what blast towers bombardment towers and so on and so forth and that's going to be super fun to see and then we have paths so um what what do i actually want these paths for even to be fair <laughs> what do I actually want them for? Because I, I, I got them and I thought to myself, oh, this is going to be very interesting and very, very useful. But now I'm thinking, well, is it actually going to be that useful? I guess. Something like this. I mean, to be fair, they are going to use these paths as a... Uh, they are going to prefer to use these paths when they can. So obviously that's a pre I mean that's a pretty big deal, isn't it? That's a pretty big deal. So if we can do that, then that's going to be really nice. I have no idea how much I'm actually spending on this pathing, by the way. So hopefully it's not going to be too expensive. But yeah, otherwise we could just continue to build the maze out, which is going to be super nice in itself. So technically what I could do is something like this. Keep it in the range of that tower for a pretty good amount of time. And then we can do something like this. 
and then we can go like so actually maybe like so yeah like this there we go okay obviously this is just a rough outline of what i am actually attempting to do obviously i can change it if i want to but most of the time i think that should be okay uh okay wait wait a minute research techniques for for, for, for preparing raw uncooked food this removes the penalty to movement speed and carrying strength for eating uncooked meals nice sounds like a good idea to me and what else do we have we have a teacher available here technically i have no workers uh available anymore so uh, i'm going to have to wait a little bit with getting the schools up and running and look at this look at that look 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 we got these little paths we got these little paths on the uh, on the ground now this is absolutely fantastic and i am very much looking forward to how our citizens are going to do because this is again this is all about keeping your people alive it's all about making sure they have enough food making sure they have enough shelter and generally making sure they have enough of everything that you could possibly want and then uh, also defending yourself from the invading demonic hordes that are coming in. So, yeah, that is Exodus Borealis. And I'm going to say that is, I, I'm, I'm going to say 9 out of 10 for, from me right here. I, I don't really know what it could do better. So, I don't know. Maybe it's a 10 out of 10. For this, for this genre that I absolutely love. I, uh, this is one of those that has basically made me not feel like an absolute idiot. So, that's a win. <laughs> that's a win in itself. So, anyway, if you'd like to check out Exodus Borealis, there is a link in the description. I highly recommend it if you are a fan of City Builders or indeed Tower Defense. That it has both in spades and they do a very good job of each one. I thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.